Oh, you need something. He has the Peak Design bag, so I thought he might have the, uh... Because I didn't know that your yeah. mount was different. Are you saying you clamp this right here? Yeah. I'm just trying to think, because it's two people, right? Possibly three. Pick it up, boy. Remember, quick no. jerking motion with your lower back. <laughs> oh, look, it's nice. Ooh, it's cheaper. Uh, lower? I think lower? Fuck, my caps work from home, dude. This is the one that I use at home. Is it normal one? Or that is not a capture card. There, no, but it's a fucking... Oh, okay. Dude, this is a capture card? Yeah. This is a capture card. The black? This is a capture card. Alright, right, so we're done here. Yep. Setup is done. I think we don't need anything else. It's looking good. 9 a.m. is you guys are going to do your CTF announcement? Yeah, we're going to get everything loaded up. Uh, 9.45. We're going to pre-game for the CTF and then okay. kick it over to you. And then what's the CTF like? Because I know you guys are really known for the CTF. Yeah, let's go downstairs. Uh, we got quals tomorrow. It's going to last for uh, about a day and a half. And then we're going to go to finals where we got a like, really cool scenario. Cool, let's go like that. Yeah, even uh, like it starts tomorrow, but we still got guys working around the clock. We got guys Did back from... downstairs? Uh, uh, yeah, they're downstairs. We got like just a few things to tighten up for finals, uh, but everything's looking really good. And then, you know, we're always trying to stuff more into quals, so there's more things for people to attack. We've got the quals, which is going to be a whole bunch of targets that we'll be hosting at, hosted out in the cloud. And there's a lot of web stuff there. There's a download solve, there's ponables, there's some reversing challenges. There's a, a little bit of blue team stuff just to throw in there, like going through logs. And then uh, we take the top 20 teams. We should have about 2,500 players uh, tomorrow, maybe th up to 3,000. We've got 60 grand in prizes to give out, so that brings a ton of people, a lot of courses. Uh, top 20 teams, we have two enterprise networks that, uh, that we're gonna deploy for all 20 teams, so they get their own environment. Um, we've got a scenario where it's modeled after uh, Silicon Valley and The Office, and so we call it Silicon Gully and Dunder Muffin. We've got this fake story where uh, where Trace Kamas, uh, Russ Hanneman from Silicon uh, Valley, creates this fake company called Lunar Fire, and this is all a play on the the Solar Winds uh, supply chain attack that happened uh, earlier this year. And so this was one of the coolest thing is uh, we did last year we did something similar to this, and it was uh, it was Office Space movie uh, back in the '90s, Mike Judd, and people just love that, right? Because so many people, yeah, exactly. So many people in the industry, I uh, just love those things. And we had uh, Russ Hanneman here do a cameo for our thing. Knock, knock, who's there, this guy? What's up, Red Teamers? What's up, DEF CON? It's your favorite fake, brilliant billionaire investor. My little birdies, cheap, 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 cheap. I like cheap things, that's why I'm rich. They let me know that Lunar Fire is under fire, but that is a Tres Comas company. And that's got so much smart shit in it. And so it's unhackable. Or is it? No, it isn't. Not even you boy and girl geniuses can do it. You would have to be the human equivalents of cars with doors that open like this or like this. Are you? Can you? Will you? Don't. Yeah. That, <laughs> we, we never expected it to be that good, right? Like totally tied in with the story. Uh, you know, throwing the gauntlet down, you know, bringing a bunch of people in to try to, try to attack it. So we're just, we're gonna have a lot of fun. So this is the red team of uh, Village CTL. So we are streaming uh, live from a house in Las Vegas and then we also have on-site people here. So there's about 500 plus teams that are playing, so it's a fully immersive uh, environment. Uh, there's tons of players, over almost 2,000 players that are playing. Uh, so pretty much with, like, with the calls that we had, you know, a lot of things, we're kind of releasing the challenges throughout the day. Just to try to keep it so it's a little bit of a pace to it so no one can clear the board right away. Uh, as well as kind of, kind of force in those bio breaks. So they don't, uh, you know, go too hard and uh, hack too much. So with that, it's just a lot of, uh, you know, just kind of managing everything that's going on, ensuring that you know our challenges out there, everything's working. A lot of support throughout the day. Uh, definitely uh, helping a lot of the teams, making sure that they, you know, kind of learn something new, get the experience of all the different challenges that are out there, uh, as well as you know, kind of monitoring where those kind of top teams are and kind of seeing what the finals rounds will look like as they uh, kind of make that progress through. So super happy to be out here. We've been doing a lot of remote support. So despite all the team that you see here, we still got a lot of guys happening back at, at our Airbnb, as well as kind of spread out throughout the country, uh, as well as a few overseas folks, just kind of giving that support kind of 24 seven, get everything moving along. So huge team that we have, uh, just kind of make all this possible, so. Hey, I'm uh, Barry, I go by Pony IP. Uh, for the Red Team Village, I'm one of the leads with uh, Savannah, uh, Last Layer, and uh, Omar. Hi, I'm Wes, uh, go by Nop Researcher. 
Uh, my kind of role is mostly uh, focused on the CTF, uh, kind of CTF lead, and then uh, filling in wherever on the Red Team Village, kind of organizing as we kind of go through the different events throughout the year. Hi, uh, my name is Savannah, and I am the co-lead of Red Team Village. Uh, so I handle the marketing, the logistics, and also I helped create the CTF this year. Uh, designed one of the challenges. So, I mean, these, these are unprecedented times, right? We, uh, we definitely had a challenge ahead of us because we want to deliver a really good hybrid event. A lot of our folks aren't able to make it out because of travel restrictions, and so we want to make sure that we were able to still include them while the you know uh, uh, the few of us were able to travel to, to Las Vegas, you know, enjoy all these festivities. So we um, we had to make sure that we had an environment that was good for the folks who were remote as well as the folks that were here, and so that was you know that was just a big challenge in itself. So it's definitely different. Uh, last year, kind of being full virtual. Uh, we're able to kind of really open to the crowd. So like the DEF CON crowd, we get a lot of players each year, but uh, they're definitely, you know, only in-house kind of player or in-person players. So with that, uh, going virtual, you know, we're able to kind of expand that out to 3,000 people. And that kind of really gave us the opportunity, you know, kind of include the CETF time crowd, a lot of the international teams that can't normally travel. Uh, so really kind of opened it up and kind of level set the playing field so you got to really kind of see where the talent was uh, across the spectrum versus, you know, just the ones who could afford to actually come out to DEF CON. Uh, so we have like a mix of that now this year. So with the ones that actually came out in person, we're able to play. So we're able, you know, we just met a couple teams uh, downstairs uh, not too long ago. It's really amazing kind of meet them in person, see who's actually playing and hacking and doing everything. Uh, but at the same time, you know, uh, kind of at the end of the day or whatever, our international teams that are playing are going to bed right now. So they're going to be waking up early, get back on there on, on the keyboard. So uh, I think it's pretty awesome to have this hybrid, both in person as well as kind of remote with the international teams playing. So you really get to see the talent across the board versus, you know, just who can afford to come to DEF CON, right? Since last year, we've had to make everything hybrid. So we have to, anything that we do, it has to be like in a hybrid kind of format. So making sure that DEF CON server can support like the channel for our CTF this year, the contest. Um, and then also in person, we are making sure that we have stuff for like swag on site and then also being able to troubleshoot uh, remotely and on site if people have any questions. Uh, for the CTF this year, it was a quals uh, challenges and then people move into the, fi the finals for the top 20 uh, teams. And so that's what's happening right now. For, for my involvement in terms of, uh, you know, going, going down a level, not, not just organizing the whole village, but the CTF itself, um, Wes and I have worked quite, quite a long time. We've delivered probably, I don't know, 100 CTFs at this point. Uh, had a lot of players and so for this one, uh, Wes was the lead on the CTF. Uh, Savannah and I worked really hard to make sure that we were doing coordination with DEF CON, coordination with our volunteers. We had, uh, we, we had a really long ramp up. We were probably working on this maybe four or five months ago. Uh, getting, you know, getting uh, an idea for what kind of CTF we want to deliver. We, uh, we have a challenge because we're, we're basically building two CTFs for DEF CON every year. One that's a qualifier that anybody can jump into, uh, and we've got a, a wide variety of challenges. The second part is we want to take those top teams and push them into a really immersive environment that we build in the cloud. I think it's just how welcoming we are and how open, right? Uh, there's definitely a lot of awesome and amazing CTFs that happen throughout DEF CON. Like each village has, you know, like IoT Village, all these other different villages, biohacking, very specific kind of niche. Uh, we kind of have, uh, I guess, more generalized and we're definitely focused on, hey, we want brand new people to come out. We want you to learn, you know, skills and we kind of have challenges uh, that teach skills along the way. So it's not always like gamified. We want you to actually learn something. And with that, kind of pushes a lot of people out of, the, uh, out of their comfort zone. And then we focus on, you know, a lot of those players, like we provide that support. We want them to get those points. Uh, we want them to learn something, move on and see as many challenges as possible. Uh, but we don't neglect kind of our advanced players with their kind of skill set. So we have a lot of the hard uh, kind of challenges out there. And with that, uh, you know, a lot of it, like the advanced web stuff, a lot of SQL injections. Uh, you know, we, we had a, um, you know, similar kind of challenges from last year uh, where we're definitely stepping up the next, no uh, next level. And you know, teams from last year playing like, hey, you know, it was really easy. I was able to run SQL map and just do this. And we're just like, yeah, but this year, you know, you got to craft your own payloads. You got to do this. You got to take it up to that next level. Uh, you know, just kind of blowing teams away. Uh, so definitely like the top 20 teams, you know, they're like the top of the top as far as it comes to like kind of the general well-rounded, whether it's web, reversing, uh, programming kind of skills. So we just cover everything, crypto. 
Uh, so then those top teams are able to kind of take it to that next level and do like a real world pen test engagement. I know what it's like to not like know certain things because I've been there. Um, so I know that there's people that even like the simplest things like how do I do like NMAP or how do I do like any of these things because people, everyone has to start somewhere. So that's like kind of the whole goal of the village is to kind of help people and give back and kind of show them to how they can like progress in whatever track that they're on. Why would I recommend people go to DEF CON? I would say that when DEF CON is uh, normal, when we've got 25,000 people running around, there is literally something for everyone. So it doesn't matter what your interest is, what your background is, what you're passionate about uh, that you want to share with others. DEF CON has a place for you. And so, uh, you know, for us, we've got, we, we, we've got the red teaming that we want to want to share with everybody. We want to train and educate people. We want to see our friends. But if you're new, there's a lot of opportunity to, to make contacts. Um, if you're looking for work, you know, there's, you know, there, there's definitely some vendors that are, that are sponsoring parties and whatnot. And so, uh, in general, it's just, you know, everybody belongs, everybody fits here. And, uh, and it's that one time a year that, you know, people really look forward to.